The Seattle Kraken are in playoff contention for the first time in the franchise's young history. Erica Ayala is here to discuss what this team may do at the deadline and all things Kraken coming up on the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could be with us today, and thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. We have got a lot to discuss. It's Seattle Kraken time, and that means we bring in Erica Ayala of Locked On Kraken. Erica, little weird situation with Seattle, the only team that did not have a player at the All-Star game. What happened, and why couldn't they substitute another player when somebody was unavailable? Yeah, well, first and foremost, thanks a lot, Vancouver. Uh, they took out Maddie Beneers, one of our games against Vancouver, our only win ever as a franchise. But Vancouver plays a, a tough and tumble game. And uh, the Seattle Kraken, we are a blue car team. Uh, you know, we have some players that will mix it up. But uh, generally speaking, we're team that teams think they can bully. Mad Beaners gets a lot of that. So can you tell Gil I have a few thoughts and feel that? But to answer the second part of that question, um, we're not exactly sure why Seattle Seattle didn't send an um, alternative player. That said, there were a lot of posts on social media. It seems like a lot of plans already finalized, including, of course, Jared McCann, who's our leading, uh, one of our, our leading scorers, goal scorer, had some plans to propose to his now fiancé. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things where Maddie Beniers goes down just two games. Uh, he missed two games, I should say, before All-Star. And and uh, they went with someone from Vegas over someone from Seattle to replace him. Yeah, a little, little surprising there. But uh, what the mascot was the representative for the Kraken officially at the All Star game. That's right. Bowie was in attendance. I am here in Florida right now still and was able to head over for some of the festivities and see Bowie engaging with the South Florida crowd, regardless of who they cheer for. And uh, Bowie definitely held it down for Seattle, especially in the uh, mascot game on Saturday after skills competition. Uh, but yeah, it was Bowie. Allison Lucan was here technically with her podcast but also some administrators from the Seattle Kraken so still lots of representation and Maddie Veneers there were some uh you know promo ads with him a big puck with uh you know his his uh, trading card on it it was bittersweet for sure but hopefully next year right now as we speak the Seattle Kraken are in first place in the Pacific Division but three points separate the top four teams right now. How do you think management is viewing this year? How important is it for them to win this year, to make the playoffs this year? How are they viewing the situation right now? Yeah, if I had to guess, so when I started Locked on Kraken, I was saying that I think it's really a three to five year plan for Ron Francis and company and that they want to be closer to that three year than five-year growth model. And so I think we're actually coming in a little bit early on that. Now, the big question, of course, is whether the Seattle Kraken have enough to be able to just maintain the consistency, really hold on to that one of those top spots in the Pacific Division to therefore make their way to the playoffs and then, of course, win when they get to the playoffs. And as every other team deals with, we have some injuries. The injury bug has hit us. I mentioned Matty Benier is at the top of our conversation, but uh, we haven't seen Giannis Donskoy all season. We haven't seen Chris Drieger all season. So I think we want to find a balance of 
aiming for what we can do this year to really be successful down the stretch and in the playoffs, while also not breaking the bank for something that we think might help us this year, but won't fit into that three to five year plan. The good news, as far as I'm concerned, is I think the immediate now things that we can do and maybe the intermediate next steps for me are the same. And anyone who's listened to me on any of our Locked On shows know that I'm always talking about defense. I think there are still some question marks when it comes to goaltending, but again, a lot of that has to do with the injury bug with regarding the Seattle Kraken, what's going to happen with Martin Jones, but we need some solid defenders. I would love to see us have a defender that's really good at moving the puck and playing more of that positionless kind of game or like Rover style defenseman that we see in the NHL. Anybody in particular you think would be a good fit and available? Yeah, that's the big question. I mean, first and foremost, people are kind of looking at Carson Susie, if that's someone that we would move. Um, you know, I think he's definitely been someone that has been frustrating, especially with the penalties that he takes but um you know I don't I don't know if we're necessarily looking at that you also you know we have uh, Eric Carlson has been someone that has mentioned a bunch of times for Seattle um you know it, it's hard for me to say um what we're eyeing you can think also maybe of some names that we heard um in the off season, but it's all going to, it's all about the price tag, the Seattle Kraken. We still have a decent amount of picks that we can utilize and be contenders when it comes to the trade deadline and certainly in the off season. But I don't get a good sense yet of if we're going to, again, try to break the bank right now at the trade deadline or wait till the off season. I'm leaning towards waiting to the off season, maybe really see how everyone gets through this season, our second ever full season. And then, reassess um, from there is kind of what my gut is telling me. Is part of that because of the depth available at this 2023 NHL draft? Yeah, indeed. We know how important prospects can be. We have Shane Wright in the pipeline, Matty Veneers, again, I've mentioned him, and a lot of other young guys that are doing great in junior hockey, but it's still going to be another year or two before we likely see them either with Coachella Valley or with the Seattle Kraken. But um knowing that we have so many picks in hand and knowing that we are expecting a pretty decent draft. That is again, one of those things, how much do we need now versus how much can we wait and see if we get better deals later? We might also see what we saw last year where just kind of changing smaller contracts here and there, maybe flipping some contracts we think will give us what we, what we want as far as either picks that we can move around and maneuver, or again, just getting a taste for, for a different, feel in a different type of hockey player. Going to be interesting to see how management handles this situation. One last question I have for you. Do you think this team is good enough the way they are situated right now to make the playoffs and, and be competitive if they get there? I think we're good enough to make the playoffs for sure. We're coming in earlier than I personally had scheduled, but the Seattle Kraken have, have played really well. I think the injury bug is a little bit concerning, but again, that's nothing that, you know, other hockey teams are dealing with as well. I should say that's nothing new to the sport and something that Seattle is going to have to, to work with. So I think we're good enough to make the playoffs. I think I still have some questions on if we're good enough to advance in, uh, you know, around one round two. And a lot of that is just little things, discipline things, this team realizing that this isn't them catching lightning in a bottle. This is them, playing to their systems, being consistent, and uh, really executing the game plan. And when we do that, we're a good team. We're a good enough team. And I'm still looking for, again, more likely in the offseason for us to do some things just like we did last year that make us even better and take us a step above. All right. Erica, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Well, thanks as always for having me, Gil. Well, first and foremost, I'll be back with you on Friday for our Women's Hockey Spotlight. So I'm excited for that. You can also catch me as the host of Locked on Kraken. The Seattle Kraken will be back in action actually against the Devils. And I will be in New Jersey. So planning to have some on-site coverage for that. And then, of course, you can follow me personally at elindsay08. That's E-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-0-8 on most social media platforms.
Well, Erica, always looking forward to our every other week uh, Friday sessions. And of course, Tuesday, it'll be Seattle and the New York Islanders. So looking forward to that as well. Erica, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Gil. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download the FanDuel app now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on, one word. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL.